Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We have an amazing show. It's amazing because we're finally back. Back together. We're finally back together <laughs> after a long time. First time yeah, in the new year. It does right. feel good. Um, and of course, it is a huge Thanks. news day. We've got Trita Parsi on to talk about the latest with the developments uh, with Iran and where that may be headed. Uh, so we'll dig deep into that. Aaron Mate also on on that topic. Uh, Bernie is going after Biden more aggressively than he ever has before. Significant development in the presidential race. And we also have have a more complete picture of all the fundraising numbers there. But we wanted to start with Iran. I mean, in a massive escalation, the president ordering the assassination of a top Iranian official here. And many are saying this could lead to a massive conflict and potentially Yeah, war. so we have some photos from the strike and, and the, basically from what happened. You can see the aftermath of what we're being told is a drone strike. And so to give everybody the background on this, of course, you know, earlier this week, Ryan and I reacted live to the storming of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. That was, we're told, and, and pretty clear from the photos on the ground, was organized by these Iraqi, these Shia militias. And these militias have largely been organized, directed, and militarily supplied by the Iranian regime for quite some time. And so, in response, the U.S. The US uh, both assassinated um, uh, assassinated Qasem Soleimani, who's the top IRGC commander of the Quds Force, as well as Abu Mahdi al muhandis He's an advisor to Soleimani, who's also killed in the attack. And then U.S. Marines arrested two other Shia militia leaders on the ground in Iraq. That's just kind of the full picture of what's going on here. And it's very difficult to describe how important Soleimani is to the Iranian regime. Yeah. Um, I saw it described—we're going to talk about this later in the show with Trita Parsi, but it described as kind of killing General Petraeus at the height of his power in Iraq. That's pretty apt, I think. You know, a, the top United States commander in the region, Soleimani directed all of the terrorist IRGC operations in Syria, in Lebanon, in the United States, supplied all of the deadliest materiel to these Iraqi militias, killed 600 troops uh, while he was there. I think there's no doubt that he was a horrible guy. He definitely had it coming for a long time. The question, right, is about escalation and the, and the, the escalatory chain here. Because we've been told now that the United States State Department is, has urged all Americans to immediately leave the country of Iraq, do not approach the embassy because they're expecting attacks. And we know that, you know, Lindsey Graham and many other people who are briefed on the operation have said that we have to prepare immediately for retaliatory attacks. That's the scary part. That's where things could spiral out of control. Of course. Possibly. Retaliatory yeah. attacks against us, against our allies, against Israel, all of that is absolutely on. I mean, the worst co possible scenario is affirmatively on the table now. And look at the case that's being made. It so reminds me of, in such a terrifying way, the case that was made for war in Iraq. Saddam Hussein's a bad dude, yeah, right? This right. guy's a bad dude, no doubt about it. But what has that meant? What is it? It meant for America. It means that we have been embroiled in endless wars in the Middle East that destabilize the entire region, the consequences of which we are still bearing. Part of the consequences of that war is the strengthening of Iran that leads us to this very day, not to mention the birth of ISIS, not to mention the trillions of dollars, the hundreds of thousands of lives lost because, quote unquote, Saddam Hussein was a bad dude. Yeah. So when you see dumb shallow analysis like that, you should discard it out of hand. And by the way, anyone who is cheerleading what is clearly an aggressive act of war here and is not willing to sign up themselves or send their kids first need to sit down right now. Yeah, so I saw a tweet from Nicholas Grossman. He's an international relations professor. And I thought he put it pretty well, which is international relations is not a morality play. Analysis that fixates on he was a bad guy rather than this will help slash harm America's national interest leads to strategic errors. See Saddam Hussein. And I think I think that's that's, it. that's really where where we have to we have to talk about like okay, look, there's no question that he was planning attacks on Americans. There's no question that he probably had a role in this embassy attack. But killing him is a very escalatory move. And and we should remember, President Bush did not kill Qasem Soleimani. Right when Qasem Soleimani was he had there. the chance, he, and, and, and listen, he didn't do we it. had a much, a very good reason to have done it back then, based on what he was doing and killing our troops. I mean, Barack Obama did not kill Qasem Soleimani. This was somebody who operated with impunity in Iraq for a long time, for the reason that he was generally viewed as untouchable. Now, 
The Trump administration, there's two ways this goes, and this is why it's kind of risky, which is that it either results in a large escalatory move on behalf of the Iranians, which puts us on, you know, into the whole gray zone and possibly hot zone of war, or they get, they get the message, symbolically react, and everything simmers down. But the problem, of course, is that their economy is in shambles. Right. Their domestic regime is also in shambles. And you're right. Hollow analysis just based on he's a bad guy. Look, I, yeah, I think he's a terrible guy. Of I'm glad he's dead. I could care less. But the real thing is about what happens now. So my real hope is that the administration has very well considered the 40th order effects, because that's what didn't happen with the war in Iraq. And what we learned in Iraq is that those 40th order effects can go very bad very quickly if well, you don't think about here's it. Here's the BS of yeah. all of this, is all this rhetoric about how this is about keeping Americans safe. Right. Please. Americans are so much more vulnerable, especially our military forces, especially our diplomatic corps overseas right now, are so much more vulnerable today than they were yesterday, which just really lays bare the lie that this is about keeping Americans or our allies safe today, what a lie that really is. We also have to remember, why is it? that president after president, who promises not to escalate, who promises to get us out of these wars, why is it that one after another, administration after administration, we end up further yeah. embroiled in these conflicts? And you cannot ignore the influence of money in all of this. I mean, think of who the Secretary of Defense is today. Mm. Mark Esper, who was the former head of lobbying for Raytheon. That is who is running the Defense Department and the Pentagon today. So do not take your eye off of the fact that there are financial interests involved here as well that constantly push us more and more and more and into these conflicts. What I would also say is that it's about mindset, which is that remember that the way there's there's a couple of theories about how government operates. One of them is just like Trump makes a decision, but that's not really how it works, which is that the Defense Department presents you options, right? right. So what they usually do is they'll create like three options. One is the most extreme option. One is a middle ground. One is like the lesser option. But those options shape policy. Like if you're only available to have three options for you, that's what scares me is that I know the way that these people think. I know that they always overestimate American strength and underestimate retaliatory effects. And the thing they underestimate of all is the unwillingness of the American people to put up with another goddamn war. And so from that perspective, they live this every single day, right? Like, they're all embro embroiled in this covert war that we've had with Iran now for 15 years. Yeah. But America did not sign up for this. No. And if you're, if you're going to do it, you better have the people on your side, and they are not there right now. That's mm -hmm. the one main thing to always remember about the national security bureaucracy is they are very disconnected from the general populace on these things. And the president, the reason we vote for president is to act as a bulwark against those things. That's right. Yeah. It's why Barack Obama beat Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. because of his stance against the That's war. It's a Trump big part of why Donald Trump was in office, put in office by the voters, was to get us out of these yeah. wars. All right, we're going to have all kinds of angles on what's going on in Iran with top experts, but we're also following domestic politics here as well, so we're going to tell you what's on our radars. That's next.